Hello and welcome. We are talking about renewable and alternative energy. In 2014, maybe we shouldn't have been talking about this. We should have been experiencing it. Uh, those of you who travel, I mean, I'm sure you've driven through temperate countries where half the roof is covered in snow and the other half has got a little solar panel. Now, recently, we've been told to switch off our freezers at night, turn off the air conditioners when you're not in the room, turn off the lights when you're not in the room. I mean, I do that religiously. I don't know about you, but still, I'm experiencing blackouts. When at all is it that you're driving home and you don't need to ring ahead to find out knowing that once you switch on your lights, it should be on. ECG is having problems with collecting bills. Is there an end to this? Is there going to be a legislation where every single household should have a percentage of its energy through renewable source? However you do it, it's your own business by the percentage. Especially with all these new developments coming up. I mean, these are multi-million dollar developments. Who is making sure that a part of their energy is from a renewable source? So we cannot put too much pressure on our usual Akosumbu and the Atuabos and the T3s and T1s. That's what we're going to talk about today. When I come back, I'll introduce my guest. My name is Anand Sakwa, and this is PM Express. Hello, and uh, well, this morning, uh, the Ministry of Energy, the Minister, has uh, literally given us a comprehensive report about the state uh, of the energy in this country and energy is one major factor it's one thing one of the few things which you don't need to play politics with it's also one thing which is very very expensive but if you refuse to spend in it it will become even more expensive it's the only way we are going to expand industry development education it's, it's, it's like a little bloodline flowing through the country and once you cut it you're basically just severing your your veins and we're here to find out how we mend this and look into the future dispassionately no politics involved and those of you listening please uh, energy deficiency goes all the way back you know way beyond president mahama probably way beyond kufu and buzia it goes back and because we didn't invest uh, the population seems to have outgrown what we need, and that's why we are here today. So whatever, even though we are discussing the faults today, it is not necessarily those in power today who caused it. It is their responsibility to try and fix it, but they didn't cause it. So let us just go into this conversation with that open mind. And with me to do this, uh, with my immediate left, is Alfred Ofusua Hinkra, who is uh, Executive Secretary of the Energy Commission. You're welcome. Thank you. And then uh, my own uncle, engineer Robert Wood, uh, solar energy expert, energy expert. Uh, he's been on here before, and he's educated us, and he's here again to educate us. Uncle Wood, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, Ghana is one of the most electrified countries in West Africa, about 72%, you know, uh, of the country apparently you know has electricity however 80 percent of the population still use uh, charcoal and firewood for cooking so i just want to find out from mr hankra if you know privatization as we are looking how would it stop it? i mean we're already all hooked up to electricity but somehow we're still going out to you know chop down woods and destroying the environment uh, will, will this help the issue well, the, the use of charcoal, mm -hmm. uh, is, it, it is a worldwide phenomenon. Mm -hmm. um, in the United States, in the most advanced countries, they still use charcoal. Mm -hmm. But they use charcoal for special purposes. Um, somebody wants to um, prepare a barbecue, you know, kebab or something, he wants a flavor. So he will choose to use uh, charcoal. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the very remote areas where they could not have uh, gas-connected systems, they will use um, other forms of uh, energy, LPG or charcoal. It is, it is used, but it is the, the way it is produced and used that matters. In Ghana, we go to the bush nearby, cut a plant or cut a tree, and we turn it into charcoal. 
we do not care or we do not think about how that plant grew mm -hmm. and whether another plant will replace it after we've cut that one. So in the end, we lose that plant, we lose the next one and the next one, and we end up turning that uh, area into a grassland. Mm -hmm. So the way we are doing it is not sustainable. Our population is growing. More and more people are relying on, on, on that tree or those trees. And if you are not careful, very soon we will end up having grassland all over. Uh, on the other hand, if we consciously decide to plant the trees we turn into charcoal, then we are dealing with a sustainable uh, charcoal production or wood for production. We can also use alternatives. The alternatives we have in Ghana today is uh, liquefied petroleum gas. Electricity is another alternative, although it's quite expensive and not many people who agree with me that it's, it's, a, it's an alternative. But these are the alternatives to the charcoal and that we, we, are, we are using in this country. Uh, so there is a future. There's a future. The, the, you've offered the provisional license, 37 provisional licenses for you know, IPPs to come on board. Are they coming on board uh, to do alternative energy or are they coming on board to do uh, the usual mainstream uh, energy that we, we use? We have granted several licenses, I think 29 or so for renewable energy. And uh, almost a similar number be a little bit less for conventional energy. Conventional energy here, we are talking of the usual power plants. Um, in Ghana today, the, the, the fashion is uh, thermal power plant mm -hmm. using gas as the fuel. So a lot of them are gas-based thermal power plants. Uh, we have a couple of them, uh, hydro, and about two coal. When it comes to the renewable, we have the bulk of them solar, um, one wave energy, and uh, about two. Wave so. as in using the sea. Yeah, wave, the sea, okay. the sea waves, and uh, a couple, about three of them also on biomass. We also have about two waste to energy using uh, waste household waste or industrial waste to produce energy. So that's the spectrum. With solar, uh, which, wouldn't you rather every property, hotel, have their own little solar that gives them a percentage of energy rather than uh, you know, clearing acres and acres of land to, to uh, produce solar at a large scale? That is one of the uh, alternatives. It's a, a one of the, the, the paths that we've defined. And uh, very soon we will launch a project that is going to look at um, supporting households to put solar roofs on their, on their buildings. I, I, and I, these I, buildings I, are going to, these uh, solar panels are going to provide light, uh, electricity for lighting. You know, solar, um, it's quite difficult to use it for industrial applications. So it will be used mainly for lighting. That is something that is in our program, and which is coming very soon. Uncle Wood, it's something in your program instead of something that should have been overdone. And I don't agree that if indeed they're going to do a uh, sanction like that or bring something like that on board, uh, why would they support anybody? I mean, I'm sure people are, not everybody is poor. People can afford it. Why don't they just buy their solar? Why should everybody be given handouts? Mm -hmm. I really don't know how to start that. <laughs> you see, we are four degrees away from the equator. Mm -hmm. And the sun is the ultimate supply of energy to the whole planet. In fact, 5.7 hours of sunlight is equivalent to one year's demand for the whole energy on the planet. So if you are near the equator, you should theoretically not have an energy problem because the sun supplies the energy to you in various forms. The energy in seed is in form of oil, which is actually being 
given to the seed by the sun. You are also starch in the plant, which is also given to the plant by the sun. You have biomass. All these are energy that you can get. But my problem is this. Germany is on parallel 51. And parallel 51, you cannot assess more than 1,000 watts of solar radiance per square meter. And Germany is on 34.7 gigawatt solar, amounting to 5.1 terawatt hours. United States is also about uh, para 30, 23 to 33. And the US is on 0 0.7 terawatt hours of solar. Now, India, all those countries that are far away from the equator are, are investing heavily in solar. There are places in Ghana here, Subirisu, according to industrial research uh, CSR report, you could get as much as 2,300 watts per square meter at about 1 o'clock around Subirisu. You know, so if you do, but how do we store it? Because come midnight now that we need to watch the program, the sun okay. will be gone. Okay, okay. That's why God has stored the, the, the solar energy in form of vegetable oil, for instance. Germany is producing a lot of oil from vegetable oil. But vegetable oil can fire the about the plant. You know, it's the, 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 it's the flash point that works. The flash point is about 180 to 200 degrees. That, that can, it's, you, using uh, the formula, this PY, et cetera, you can actually preset. But the point is that industries are producing plants that work on vegetable oils. So if you have a problem, we don't need more than 2 million tons of vegetable oil to meet our energy demands. And if Malaysia is producing around 20 million tons of palm oil, it means that it should be possible for us to, to, to produce the required energy from vegetable oil. If you go to Europe, for instance, the only vegetable oil plant that they use is called the rapeseed. The rapeseed does not give you more than 1,000 kilograms of oil per hectare. Now here, if you plant the, pan, uh, the oil palm properly, you get 5,000 kilograms per hectare. That means we have a ratio of 1 to 5 in our favor. And if you take solar, the ratio is one to two in our favor. So why should we have these difficulties? Is, is, is it not going to be too expensive? And that maybe the, uh, you end up at, you know. But then what, what if you say it's expensive, what about the white man? We are all God's created creatures. And it's expensive for us, but it's not expensive for the white man. Then let us create those conditions. That will not make it expensive. Now, you see, we have major, major advantage over roof vis-a-vis, uh, say, biomass. Mm -hmm. I think last time when we came here, I did mention that one kilogram of wood gasified will give you one kilowatt hour of electricity. And that 13 million tons of firewood that was consumed, as mentioned by the president some few months mm -hmm. ago, is actually equivalent to 13 million megawatts. Ghana has been exporting timber for years. And me and you know that when they harvest the timber, the timber is of a certain particular size, I think 42 to 48 feet. Anything outside that, including all the branches, are left in the bush. We have done research, and actually, because the forestry department actually marks the storm, so they know where the wood waste is. And if he had given me enough, I would have brought you uh, photographs from Dubias and other places where wood has been left in the bush because uh, where they are operating, it's not easy for the uh, farmers or that to go and convert into, into, into charcoal and other things. They don't have the resources. So as we are talking now, we have huge quantities of wood that is left in the bush sitting down, which can be converted into energy through a decentralized program. And if we were to do that, then also to support his idea that we should go in afforestation. Look at the Afra planes. What do you have there? We could just broadcast named seed. We could broadcast tropical almond. Tropical almond, two and a half years, becomes a complete tree. And it has a stored energy in the seed, that's tropical almond oil, which is very expensive. But then, if we were to just 
go back to try to retrieve the wood that is left in the bush at the moment. I can guarantee you 3,000 megawatts now for what is sitting down there. If we were to set up uh, decentralized gas stations, uh, wood gas, even if we're able to organize the villages, that are right, the, the, the firewood that you are taking to your kitchen, put it as a central point. Uh, now, if you gasify it in the gasification system, there's something called exothermic endothermic system. That will give you combined power and heat. To produce one kilowatt hour of electricity with one kilogram of wood, you require only 15 liters of well water. You require 0 0.001 of uh, gas oil and the same 0 0.001 of, uh, of uh, gas, actual propane gas. Now, we did an extrapolation, and we arrived at the fact that we could produce energy here at four cents per kilowatt hour. That's against the Abwazi. The Abwazi uh, combined cycle is 9.5 cents per kilowatt hour, and then the single cycle is 11 cents per kilowatt hour. What we did was that we went to the market, and then we identified a Kia 5-ton Kia truck. They, we asked for the price, say, 5 million cities. So that means that one ton is 1 million cities. That's all cities. Now, if you convert that into dollars, just about $30 or so per ton. So one kilogram means you are dealing with three cents of, of that. Now, if you take 0 0.001 of diesel, diesel is $1. So that's 0 0.1 cent. If you take 0, 0 0.1 of gas, that's also $1. That's also 0 0.1 cent. So you get 3.2 cents. Now, the world water 15 liters you are supposed to generate it through your infrastructure. So that gives you anything less than four cents per kilowatt hour. And we are saying that let us have a homegrown solution. Because of the sun, and you have water, you have sunlight, you have carbon dioxide, for photosynthesis takes place, biomass is generated. So if you have a proper program, you must have a program, because other countries are doing it. Philippines have been doing, has been doing that for over 30 years. And then the Brazilians are doing that, solving all this uh, fuel, using ethanol, and so on. But we do not seem to have a, prob a program that will let us not rely on the... I, I, if I were the president, I would not burn a single liter of gas for power. That gas must be processed into fertilizers and other things. So let us go and use those things that are, be that are available to us right now. That other people have done. And then, and then stop, it because once you relate it to, you, to the dollar, this energy price will keep going up and up and up. But it is totally possible. I'm prepared to argue with everybody and give him, the person all the data that we have collected, that we can produce energy in this country for less than five cents per kilowatt hour. Is it, is it too complicated, what uh, Engineer Wood is saying? Um, there is always a difference between theory and practice. Mm -hmm. And to, to, to turn the theory into practice, what governments do is to search the enabling environment. Mm -hmm. In Ghana, the enabling environment has been set. And that is the, uh, in the Renewable Energy Act. Mm -hmm. which was passed in 2000, well, 31st December 2011, practically 2012. And this law allows the uh, production or commercialization and integration of renewable energy into our national energy mix. The law provides for private sector development of renewable energy harnessing renewable energy and um, in the law about 10 or 11 sources of renewable energy have been identified and this includes the wave, the solar, the wood as engineer, uh, engineer Wood is saying, uh, all, all of that, biofuel, biodiesel, all of them have been identified in the law. Mm -hmm. So the Arab person can develop these resources and market it. The law provides 
for the obligatory purchase and and mark that word it's an obligation for utilities to purchase renewable energy that is generated or produced by individuals or companies so the playing the playing field has been set okay what is left is for uh, the individuals and organizations to take up the challenge and as I was telling you a lot of them have approached the Energy Commission which is the uh, licensing authority and we have provided all the guidelines um, everything that needs to be done the PURC has come out with what we call the feeding tariff for let electricity let me, let, let me. so the enabling environment has been set it is now um, up to um, individuals or organizations to take up the challenge. Even with NPA, we have put in the, um, uh, the biofuel component of, of, of fuel. You don't know that maybe the, the fuel that you buy, the diesel that you buy, contains a percentage of biofuel. Let me, let me come here. If, if we, we, you see, we, we have hoping to get 5,000 megawatts by 2060. Mm -hmm. But we are saying that we've opened the playing field and therefore people should take up the challenge. And people are taking the challenge. I can tell you there are organizations who are planting hectares, hundreds of hectares of trees in the Afram Plains mm -hmm. for the purpose of generating electricity. Uh, as in, uh, it's in Ghana today, yeah. The, the wood chip which yeah, yes. engineers are going to... Yes. Oh, okay. They are, okay. They are going to... They, they, you know, it takes three years or so more to, to, for them plants to mature. Mm -hmm. And they have already applied for a license. Right now, they are just cutting, uh, pruning the, the, the trees, and they are converting the branches and other things into charcoal, mm -hmm. which the indigenous in those areas are uh, being helped, being supported to produce charcoal for uh, local use or for export. It's happening. OK. Uh, I'm going to take a break. And when I come back, I want to go back to uh, if there will be a legislation, a law that mandates that households that can afford, and I'm sure we have to find a way of determining who can afford and who can afford, should win at least 10% of their energy or 20% of their energy off the national grid to free the national grid to supply industry. Can that be done and how is it possible? Stay tuned, we're coming back. Renewable and alternative energy, very important subject, very needed for nation development. Just before the break, I was just wondering that as a state, could we pass a law mandatory that every household well every household that uh, can afford and should be a system of measuring i don't know how probably if you live in east legon or airport whether you're broke or not you you have to afford it just by your address but just to take you know a percentage of your energy dependency off the state so that the state is not too much under pressure and then we can supply the industrial areas and the temers and the and a you know, few factories we have, so they, they can have energy. I mean, can, can, can it be done? I mean, should we do it? Think sure, it. sure, it can be done, and it's, uh, it is being done. Uh, I mentioned that we have uh, But you said that the government will help. We've, we've helped no, let me, let me, let me, let help me, Let me explain. Yeah. Let me explain. We have the, uh, the feeding tariff, which for the utility scale renewable energy production. Then we have what we call uh, net metering. Mm -hmm. By net metering, what we, we, we are saying is that if you have a renewable energy resource in your, in your home, it could be a solar roof, you can connect it to the grid. And if you generate more for more than what your household needs, the, 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 the rest is put onto the grid. At the end of the month, there is debit and credit. The meter, there is a special meter that reads in two directions. So then you become your own small assembly. Exactly. So <laughs> you, you, at the end of the month, the, the meter will be, will, be, will be read. If you have exported more, you'll be credited. If you have uh, taken more from the grid, you pay the difference. Mm -hmm. 
So that scheme is there. In fact, uh, the first set of meters have arrived in the country. And they